Hi everyone, I'm here to record a simple and easy video on um, how to get started in S3D. Um, we're just going to build a really simple frame analysis model. Um, so this tutorial is, is going to be really good for, for students or new users or anyone who's maybe a little less familiar with structural analysis software. Uh, we're going to break it down to the, to the basics and just build a very simple model um, and learn how to apply loads and boundary conditions um, and set members and sections and and so forth. So how to set up your model, how to solve it, and how to review the results. Um, so we're just starting with S3D, so that's um, a structural analysis software. And usually we start with nodes. So um, there's a few ways to enter nodes. I'm just going to start by um, tab and entering the various um, XYZ coordinates that we need to put in. Um, another way you can do it is um, at the same time as you're connecting your members, you can also use the pen tool to apply your nodes and members here at the same time. So this is a quick and easy way where we're actually not only defining the nodes where the start and end point of each member is, but we're actually also defining the members as well. So we can see now we have some uh, members also known as elements um, in the structural analysis process. So this could be a very, this is all we're going to do is a very simple frame just um, in the uh, XY plane. And yep, so we've got our node end start and end points. Um, we're going to also define two different sections. So, um, you know, I connected those using the pen tool, but another way you can do is just drag and connect between the nodes. And if I click that member, I'll see all the attributes assigned to that member by default. So I can see the node start position and the end position, so node two to node three. Um, you know, I can obviously change these if I want to connect something like two to four. Um, type, there's a few different types of members. Uh, I won't go into the um, details of these, but I'll just leave that as continuous. Um, and then section ID is very important too. So what is the cross section here? So maybe we've got two columns and a beam. So I'm going to change the, the cross section of this um, member to two. And we're going to define what that two represents a little later, but you'll see um, it changed color um, to represent that this is a different section to the two columns. Um, and then we've got some fixities. So you might want to have a pinned connection at either end here. So maybe it's pinned on both sides. So I can do one of two things. I can just hit a shortcut and hit truss and that'll change that to a pin. So truss and pinned are kind of used interchangeably. Um, or I can custom define my own fixities. And there's more information on fixities if you just click the I there. Um, that'll give you more information and also take you to um, the area in our documentation with videos and, and more examples. Um, and that goes for all, all of our attributes here. Um, so I'm, the only thing I'm going to really change with this member is the section ID 2. So you can see that that's now changed um, to green. And actually, sorry, I did also change the fixities to uh, pin. So I can see that that's now um, denoted by these two dots to say that this member is now pin connected. and um, and not a rigid connection to these members. So it's not going to transfer, transfer any moment forces, which we'll see um, when we perform the analysis. I'll explain all that. Um, then we're going to just assign some boundary conditions. So these are the supports. This is where your structure is supported. Uh, so I'm just going to hit control and highlight these two nodes. So that's a little shortcut. I'll go to my supports and I can double click and that's going to take anything that's highlighted here and enter it into the, the input field there. And I'll, I'll leave it as fixed support. So that's going to be a very rigid um, support there. It could be uh, something that's um, encased in concrete into the ground. So it's a very rigid, strong support there. Um, other alternatives are pin supports or spring supports or even uh, roller supports as well. So it just depends on your structure. Um, and I'm also going to define what these sections are. So I've got two, as I previously indicated, I've got two black sections here and two and one green section indicating the beam. And there's a few different ways we can um, enter in a section, but I'm just gonna start by clicking this and going to our section builder. So we're gonna define what columns we're using here. So I'll go to the American Library. Maybe sort of a W shape. Um, w shape, there we go. Uh, maybe like a W10 by 17. 
Uh, so in, in the section builder, you can also define your own sections, but for this case, it's gonna be a very simple one. Um, but you can add sort of timber, steel, cold formed, all the different types of sections that you might wanna um, add to your model. And I'll submit that. So now my section one has some cross section definition as a W10 by 17. And then we're gonna do the same with the green, but I'm, I'm just gonna show a quick shortcut. We can just hit that um, database and just search W6. So that's a much faster and easier way if you're adding, adding library sections into your model. That's, that's a really easy way to do that. And one way we can confirm that that's now looking pretty good is just through the renderer. Um, so I just go output renderer and that will display um, the different cross sections that I've built in the model. Um, yeah, and finally we're gonna add some, some load. So we've, got, we've built the model, we, we're pretty happy with how it's supported. And we've given some cross-section properties. Obviously the nodes, the members have all been added as well. So now we're gonna apply some loads, some forces to, to the structure. Uh, we're gonna just do that, maybe some sort of distributed load to this top member. So one, uh, maybe a little less than that. So we're doing a, a kip feet force. So it's gonna span across the entire member in the Y direction. So that's a global Y here. So I can see that's been added. Um, and maybe I wanna add, uh, actually I'll also explain a little bit about the load groups because that's quite an important concept too. So um, in, in structural analysis and when you're design, in structural design in general, there's different types of loads that we apply. So you might apply a dead load, uh, which is sort of a fixed load or a live load, more of a, a moving load or, or something that can change. You know, it might be like people in the building or equipment, things like that. Um, although equipment could go either way, but you know, Forces that, that might be different um, in different scenarios. Um, another one might be wind load, um, snow load. So there's all these different design forces that we apply to the structure to test it under different load combinations or different scenarios. So uh, the load group is a really useful way to um, kind of define what the load is. So let's call this a dead load. And I can call this whatever I want, but I'm just gonna capitalize it um, to make it obvious. And then that's quite useful if we're gonna sort of apply some, uh, some maybe some other forces. Or we'll do some point loads uh, to node three in the X direction. Um, we'll call this a wind load. And then maybe we'll also apply another distributed load to this member. Again, you can use other ways of doing things like right clicking. Um, and we'll do one zero point two. And this one will we'll offset just by 25% on each end. And we'll call this a snow load. And you notice when I do go to enter this, it is offering me the other options that I've already entered. So quite easily, if there are other dead loads, I can add them. But in this case, it's a new classification. So I'm just gonna add snow loads. Okay. And then um, we'll also add some load combinations to kind of account for you know different scenarios, maybe where it is very windy, but there's no snow loads on the, on the structure or where, you know, it's very windy and, um, you know, people are moving around the building. So we've got some other live loads. So I will enter in some load combinations to account for all those different scenarios to make sure, you know, we're considering all those cases. And I'm going to use um, the design standard um, kind of default design code uh, load combination. So I'll look at ASCE 716, ASD, um, and so you can display those. And then what I'm doing here is I'm just assigning them to, uh, so the cases I've given, so I've given the word, the, the category dead load, snow load, and wind load. And in the software, I'm gonna basically link that to an ASCE um, design load type. So you can see that these are actually from the design code and I'm gonna tell the software that my case here is the same as a wind load, snow load, dead load is a dead load. Um, so it knows how to apply these correctly. So once I've imported, I now have sort of 13 load cases with different combinations, different factors being applied. So if I look at one example, um, this one is where the dead load, dead load and live load are both on with a factor of one. Dead load is, has a factor of one. I don't have any live loads defined here, so um, they're all specified as zero. Or another example, maybe a dead load plus a wind load case. So dead load is one 
and my win load case of 0 0.6. So this fact, this is going to be factored by 0 0.6. Um, so yeah, I've got my load combinations, supports, loads, structures defined. Uh, I'm ready to perform the analysis. So I run the structural analysis, a few different types, but for, for now let's just focus on a basic linear static analysis. And here are all the different combinations that um, I previously mentioned. So you can review each of the different combinations. You can review the different load cases, which are the ones we defined as per ASCE, or the different load groups as well, so the ones that I defined um, earlier. Or you can use the envelope cases, which is going to display the absolute worst case of all these different cases. So it'll consider and, and kind of loop through all of these and check the worst results and it'll display um, the worst result for, say, let's look at bending moment, um, for each of these members. So this might be a different case to this one, to this one. So we're just considering all the different uh, load combinations for each member. But here we can see the bending moment. Um, as previously mentioned, this is a pinned connection, pinned element here. So um, you'll see that there's no moment forces being transferred from this member to this member. So that's something to look out for. Um, that's the type of behavior that you'll get out of this sort of structural element. If this was rigid, you'd probably see some bending moment here that's then being transferred to this element uh, below. So um, that's just a, a point to make about changes you make in the model can affect the results um, quite significantly. So I've got uh, also displacement. That's a, a very useful one to review. So um, you can hold S and scroll your mouse and they'll animate the deflection or you can just use this scroll bar. Uh, quite a useful result to review. Um, various stresses there so we can also see that um, this is highlighted red. Um, that's controlled in the uh, results settings but we've got um, some yielding uh, of this member here so it's automatically so it's sort of alerting you to some um, areas you might want to look at because the, uh, the max combined stress in this case is exceeding um, the the yield strength of the of the material used in this uh, member. Um, so yeah, quite a lot of different results. I won't go through all of them, but another very common one is a summary. So the summary just tells us at a snapshot what is my structure doing, how is it performing under the loads that I've applied to it, um, and we can see there's there's a few utility ratios above one, which indicates some sort of a failure criteria. Um, deflection span ratio is is greater than L over 250. Uh, I've also got some stresses, which I mentioned previously, that um, there's some members exceeding the yield strength. Um, so, yeah, definitely something uh, to review and, and change in the model and making changes or adjustments to the model quite easy. Um, maybe we want to change the strength, this just change this section, um, build up the strength of the section. So I can just go and back in and edit. Um, let's choose something like a W10, something a little bit more rigid. Submit that. So now I can see I've got another W10 there. Resolve. And yeah, kind of reduce down some of the stresses. It's no longer yielding. There's a, a little bit of a deflection span, so, sort of serviceability um, criteria that's failing. Maybe that doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, kind of review the changes that you make to your model. You can then obviously look at the different results that that creates uh, through the analysis process. Um, obviously, you can also change materials. So, I mean, it's still quite strong, but maybe you want to reduce the um, materials of these elements. You can also um, change the sections of those. And the great thing is that uh, because I've linked both of these members to one section, I only have to change it in one area. Um, and maybe I want to go for sort of a timber element. I can also, you know, select those as well. It's going to have to be quite, quite large. Got, got a lot of forces on there and changing the material here to um, some sort of timber or maybe something from the NDS database makes makes more sense in this case. Um, so yeah, it does support different materials uh, if you want to apply um, different sections uh, or, you, or you're designing, you know, cold form steel members. The process is the same. It's just about what, what elements you're choosing or what um, sections you're choosing. So I hope that helps as a really simple uh, example of how to build a frame analysis model, um, how to solve it and how to look out for certain results um, to help you get started uh, using S3D. Thanks a lot.